starting on the aggressive preset. Um, I'm just gonna again go out, see what the card feels like. I've never done any testing here before, I think. Yep, no setups yet. So I'll just go out and uh, see what's up. I think we cannot adjust anything here. Nope. So no diff this time. Um, we'll see how this is gonna pan out after a couple of laps. Always very enjoyable to test and spa, especially because the pit lane. Again, warming up the brakes first, so they can dissipate some heat into the tire as soon as we make our way onto the first outlap. I decided to go for this combination this time, because I've read a lot of stuff on the forums about how the, especially the low end grip on the on, on this car seems a bit odd. So I, I thought, you know, why not give it a go and see what it feels like. And also because I think it's just a lot of fun driving, driving the cup car around Spa. Mainly because it's just so different to the GT3s. And you have so many high speed uh, sections. You gotta work a lot more than in the GT3 cars, so yeah. I thought it'd be fun. And we immediately feel the Porsche handling corner entry. It's not like like the typical mid-engine turn in oversteer, which is a lot more aggressive and sudden. Here we can really feel how the weight is just slowly making the rear turn and, and rotate away from us. It's a very strange characteristic that we all know Porsches have. Okay, I see. Even second gear, small tap on the gas and immediately big counters here, but you know, that was manageable so far. Since uh, this car doesn't have any, any traction control, modulating the throttle is a lot more important and maybe this is also the reason why oh, people complained a bit because yeah, it's, it's not easy. Yeah, this is some mid to exit corner under understeer here because of the relatively safe setup, I guess. Yeah, not really willing to rotate there. High speed stability is very good. A bit too much understeer still. Right there, full throttle just after the apex on that on that hairpin and no no issue whatsoever in terms of traction. That's really the biggest advantage of the en engine hanging behind the rear axle that you get all the grip. Once the car is settled down, if you have a slight bump there or you you turn the wheel a bit too much, then yeah, it might get heavy. But once you're straight, you can really push it all the way. You can hear a lot of ABS um, activating all the time every time I brake, which is a a small hint that the brake bias is too far to the front. Yeah, also too much ABS setting in general, I'd say. Yeah, the just chronic understeer on the high speed right now. And then this happens, which is mainly due to the engine in the back. Something I, I think we're not really gonna get rid of. Even first gear, let's see. Oh, yep. But this was not, not you know, that was just a mistake by me, not any... I wouldn't say any major low speed tire grip issue. Yeah, car is way too understeery despite the aggressive setup. 
Maybe get away with a, a bit less downforce as well. Tire temperature seems to be fine, all green. Brake ducts are too far open as well a bit, so we need to close them. Let's try all the curb. The more curb you take on the inside, usually I find the, the, the more stable it is. You want to really hit all the green, you want to go all the way to the green Astro turf on the inside. If you hit the curb with only a, a tiny bit, then it gets tricky, but if you take it all, it's fine. Just moving the steering again back and forth to see where the car wants to go and what it does and to get a feel of where the grip is. And it, it's a lot slower than, than the GT3 cars. But you have to work so much more. This is where the fun comes from. Not enough lift over steer or lift rotation. So yeah, after like what, three or four laps now, getting a feeling of the overall balance. Tire pressures are too low as always. We'll adjust that easy. So I'm gonna jump back to pits and do the tire pressures first. Yeah, 16 in the front left, 11 in the fr front right. Temperatures are very cold still, so really have all the, all the options in terms of pressure. I'm gonna go for eight clicks on the rear, so that will make so it'll hit just below 28 once it's um, hot, and then we adjust the brake ducts as well again, you know, to to get the overall temperature a bit up in the tire. The brake disc we can close them all the way down. Let's see, we had. Yeah, th I think that's good. We run a lot of camber in the front, which is very normal for the cup car, for the Porsche cup car. Maybe you, you've seen pictures of them in real life. They run crazy high camera settings in the front. Almost looks like these Japanese tuning cars. About the caster, usually I, I up the values a bit to get more precise steering. Maybe I do it a bit, but I don't want to do too much because I don't know how the car reacts to more caster and um, more camber gain in the corner. Total is very low. That could be because yeah we have a long straight and high speed, so we don't want any tire scrub going down the going down all these long straights. But I think we can get away with a bit more for stability. Other than that, I'll get back to camber maybe in a later stage. The mechanical group next, so we can just lower this a bit. Yeah, I said that my brake bias is way too far to the front, and that's where the ABS is locking up. So I'll put that. I don't know, to 52 for now, or maybe adjust it um, lighter when we drive. Then we can see something usual for the Porsche. We have less ARB in the front than in the rear, so the front is softer. In all the other cars, it's usually the other way around, and that's because the engine is in the back here. If we put the anti-roller to softer setting, then the car obviously will roll more, which isn't necessarily bad. The problem comes with tire usage and, and overheating of the outside tire going through high speed turns. Because all the weight is in the back, the tire has a lot of load um, on it, even if station, even when stationary and then when we go through high speed turns and we have a low ARB, the outside tire is, is getting more and more load because the car rolls more and shifts more weight onto the outside tire. Plus the engine already sitting there, that, that usually means that the outside tire gets way too much stress and then either overheats or just, yeah, doesn't grip. That's why you put high ARB settings here to even out the, the stress on the tire. And then you have to adjust all the other settings to cope with a possible rear oversteer that comes from that. Overall balance was understeery, so I'm not gonna touch ARBs yet. Maybe even go for a bit more understeer because I want the low speed understeer to get, you know, a lot of confidence and pushing in slow speed corners. And then I'll adjust uh, dampers and the uh, arrow settings for the high speed stuff. So yeah, steer ratio felt all right. In terms of arrow, we have 10 settings and we're in the middle right now. So that means the advantage of going any lower won't be too big. We are running pretty high in terms of ride height. These cars in real life um, do this to hit and take all the curbs that you have around the, the tracks. If there's a, a chicane and it has sausage curbs, on the inside, these cars always take and jump around all these curbs all the time, so that's why they, they run very high ride heights. 
here in Spa, there's nothing in a way like a big sausage club that we really need to take. So I think I can lower the right hat quite a bit. Let's see what the arrow balance is right now. We are at minus 2.8. If we lower this to, let's say, 8 millimeters here and we go down 8 millimeters here, you'll see that we don't have the same number now, although I've lowered both ends of the car the same. In order to get the same number down here again, so the same overall balance, I need to lower the rear a lot more than the front. So this would be all the understeer. And if I put it to 92, which was 8 down from what I, where I started, my car is a bit more oversteer now, which, you know, is exactly what we wanted in the first place. I'm going to look at dampers uh, in the next stage and go out for now and check pressures, check brake temperatures, check overall feeling and then come back in. Well, that was fun. As always, when doing any setup adjustment runs, make sure to wait for at least the outlap or maybe even the first flying lap before you judge your, your changes. We have a totally different tire pressure um, setup now than the last time out, so we need really to wait for the temperatures to go up before we can, before we can comment on any of the changes. So first flying lap, I think the balance is really good uh, for now. We didn't break anything and didn't make it any worse. Which is the first, my first thought exiting the pits. I really need to check if I increased anything that I wanted to decrease. High speed understeer is a lot uh, better now and low speed stability is still very good. A lot less ABS locking and a lot more room to play with on the brakes. Before it was always just immediate ABS, now we can modulate the, the brake a bit better and like this and really choose how much braking we want. This corner, it's, it's still a lot of ABS locking, but that's, that's just the nature of the corner. Still a bit more understeer here, but I think we can work on the dampers to get the transition perfect. There comes the Porsche engine, trying to overtake me. But it feels very safe for now, I can really push and the only thing I have to worry about is understeer and not oversteer, which is always very nice. And tire pressures seem to be pretty much exactly where I wanted them to be. A bit too early on the throttle, but then you just have to yeah, catch it again. It's, it's doable, it's, it's tricky, but that's just how it is. One brake disc is cooling down quite a bit on this way here, so we'll look at the pressures and temperatures. And maybe even close the duct by one again. Yeah, coming in too hot, you immediately feel the, the engine again coming coming from the rear. And, and as soon as the momentum is, is there, when the engine decides, okay, okay I need to oversteer now, then, then there's no way out of it except for excessive counter counter steer and counter adjustments like here again you can really use it to rotate the car if you get that perfect I might even adjust the wing level a bit and make it more more oversteer a situation, situation like this where the engine really pushes your rear around at first is very strange but you can use it to your advantage to get the corner entry right and then once the car is settled, because of the the understeer setup, you have a very stable car on exit. So that's where the Porsche really um, excels in terms of lap times. That you use that strange behavior to your advantage 
to get the speed through the corner. Yeah, this is exactly how I expect this to, to handle coming out of the slow act, um, happens. You can always catch it, but if you're not careful, you definitely get oversteer. Breaking a lot earlier, taking all the curb, and the car is a lot more stable then. Yeah, the lift of oversteer is increasing ever so slightly the more I push. This is something I can work on by adjusting the dampers. Brake bias setting seems to be spot on. Now what happened there is not, I wouldn't say um, an engine or unreal engine or I said to call the floor. It's just that you go through the turn already sliding too much on exit. Your car is just not settled down like like right now, um, I have no issues. But when you're on the apex and the, the rear m rotates ever so slightly and it's not not gripping well enough, then putting the power down is just never gonna work. Yeah, the oversteer on lift is a bit too much now because of the lower arrow settings. Corner exit feels very good. Mid Entry to, to mid is a bit too oversteer, so that's that's all the dampers. A situation like this is exactly where we have to adjust dampers and make it a bit more stable. Right here. Yep, that's where the rear end comes around. And since I don't want to adjust my brake bias, I need to work on the damping. So I'll just finish this lap for the or the lap time and then head back to pits. So 222, which is not too bad, but really not, not fast in any sense. High pressure seems all right, but could be a bit higher on the front left. A lot more heat could come from the brake disc. Rear seems pretty much spot on. Maybe a bit lower on the right side here. Um, I'll try just to, to lower it to see where we end up on, on the braking. Fuel is perfect as well for balance. I mean, you have to Keep in mind that the Porsche has its fuel tank in the front. So testing on, and practicing with a full tank means a completely different balance than with an empty tank. You know, thinking about race and, and quality setups, keeping the tank halfway um, filled. So I get the middle ground in terms of, of, of balance. Aero was a bit too much understeer still. There's two ways of going about it. We could now add a rake, therefore shift the overall balance just by right height adjustments or we can lower the rear wing um, we'll jump from minus 1.9 to minus 1.5 which is a relatively small um, step for, for adjusting the wing so a bit of right height adjustment not a big uh, change from from 1.9 to 1.6 but definitely big enough to to feel the difference now the fun part first before you touch any of the damping it's very important to nail the problem you want to solve in the car thinking about what what i experienced in my, my last couple laps was mid to entry oversteer so i break in a straight line i could even trail brake a bit but as soon as i come off the brake yeah pitch the car into the corner i have a very slow steady um rotation towards the apex that that doesn't stop from itself so i always have to open my steering again or get on the gas, try to use the diff. We are at the entry of the corner where the car moves and pitches forward. Therefore, I'll take a look at the bump in the front and the rebound in the rear. Oversteer on entry, we are not really braking anymore. So adding rear rebound might help a bit, but I don't want to do it too much because the braking is, is already over and it's it's just the overall rotation of the car that, that that's yeah, working against my will. Just by adding a little bit of more bump in the front, I give the front a bit more reactive feeling, but also make the car less dip. Once the car is done braking, 
and still rotating. That's what I felt as well. Then we can also look at the other settings like rebound and, and bump in reverse in terms of front and rear. By increasing the rear bump a bit, I'll slow down the weight transfer towards the rear when accelerating and also give a bit pre more precise and reactive feel from the rear. This could work in both ways. So lowering the setting um, can help and increasing the setting can help. So this is really just trying one, one way out and then seeing how it helps. I'll go for the increase first and then see how, how the car will react. Fast bumps I'm not going to touch at all. The only uh, part of the track where we n really need fast bumps in this case is um, a whoosh and the car felt really good through there. So I'm not going to touch it at all. So yeah. Tire pressure pressures adjusted, arrow adjusted for the high speed understeer, brake duct for the temperature, dampers for the mid to entry oversteer. Yeah, that's it. Gonna go out again. A yeah, perfect example that the adjustments did work. These two turns um, before really showed the typical behavior of the Porsche. Where the rear is trying to to play with you and now i can just take the turn like any other car basically i still have to be aware of it and i can provoke it if i break uh trail break a bit more or if i if i suddenly change directions but this is still very very manageable and can also help in a situation where i want the car to rotate a bit more so far finding the perfect middle ground between between oversteer and and too little of it See how this feels coming out of here. Yeah, this is uh, a very good balance so far. Uh, it's still a bit too much now that the tire is actually warm. See that that's a good that's a prime example of um, uh, tire temperature coming up, feeling differences in balance between between lap one, two, and three. car really benefi benefits from driving smoothly and and not overdriving it too much it's it really speeds up through the corners a lot more when, when you enter with slower speed and really let it settle before you then push on on the apex again I still need a bit less understeer at high speeds okay 21 so far the first thing I, I do usually is try to figure out the, the worst issue I have on the setup. And last time around was entry to mid or over rotation. It's a lot better now. I talked about the high speed error, which can easily be done without having to worry about the other issue I just uh, had with that, that corner entry, which is very handy because having two similar issues at the same time can mean that solving one is increasing the other but in my case having two issues that are completely uh, unrelated makes it relatively easy to to work on them individually so i'll drop the ring again by one so we overall shifted the balance by 2.2 percent and for the dampers i think that we can still use a bit more rebound to help with corner entry maybe also increase the bump again because i didn't ha have any issues on the corner exit the entry is very precise in this car. We have a uh, very, very stiff spring in the car, although it doesn't show. Therefore, we don't need the damper to to be very uh, hard. We need to we can, we can allow the the damper to be soft because the spring is so strong already. It was okay right now, and by doing a lot of practice, you can definitely get used to um, to a setting more aggressive. Tire pressures were pretty much spot on. In terms of temperatures, the rear looks all right and the front still a bit too low. We can just try out if the brake will overheat. I like the, the overall stability in terms of toe and camber. ABS felt all right. We can try even one lower setting here and go out and test again. Immediately noticing a lot more um, apex rotation. Let's see how it'll 
uh, work out when when the temperatures of the tires up. Yeah, the the rear is now getting away from me again, which is due to the the more reactive or more aggressive rear bump setting. I would say we closed I uh, closed the setting a bit, uh, so higher clicks and. That means that the, the weight transfer is a bit quicker between between left and right and that was a bit too much I think. This is a similar issue I had uh, after the first session. By coming into the turn the car just doesn't stop to rotate. Like here. It's a lift off oversteer, so we have to look at the damper again. But the overall feeling is a lot more lively and less understeer at exit, so I really like the, the changes in that sense. Lap time is increasing or decreasing, looking at the delta as well, so that is good. Still too much high speed understeer. Apex balance is very good. At first I thought there was going to be too much oversteer on Apex, but it's really just a matter of where you uh, brake and where you accelerate. The steady cornering is, is very balanced. So the oversteer right here just comes from braking. But once I'm settled in the corner and with a bit of gas, it's, it's very nice. I want to go back to pits and see what we can we can do in terms of damping again. I'm gonna open up the brake duct for the overheating front brake disc. The pressures look all right. We can lower the rear a bit. Now, because the high sp or the, the mid corner was very nice on on depending on what the what type of a turn we have, making it a bit more understeery in the in the mid to slow corners to to tell me earlier that I need to back off and then be able to nail the exit. In terms of damping, I'll reduce the rear. I want click to help settle it a bit more. We could also increase a bit the rebound again to help with lift off oversteer. Talking about high speed, I think we can increase the rake a bit to help with rotation on the high speeds. Yeah, decreasing bump for the for the corner entry again. I'm thinking about trying out high damp damp settings in the front just to see what it does. Different cars react differently to a setting like this. Some will suffer a bit more understeer due to less pitch in the front. Some will suffer from more oversteer after that because the, the front is more reactive. Let's see how this is going to work out here in the Porsche. And yeah, the lift off rotation to the last uh, high speed turn there felt very good. Same here, although it's not as noticeable because we are at higher speeds. Yeah, the front bump setting definitely helped. You can see me turning into early now because the precision is there, but I didn't expect the, the rear to stick that well. Also through here, we don't have that nasty over rotation coming down that downhill corner here. Here you have to be very careful with your steering inputs at first because if you do overdo it then you get too much inertia in the from the rear. You don't want to give the engine any ability to think of its own in terms of where it wants to go. Very nice. That's a lot of fun to nail that corner. Something easy to forget and something you have to really be aware of when testing a new car. Generally, just testing a new combination of, of car and track. When you see, you know, mistakes that you make, or when you see weird car rotations and behavior, knowing whether it's your own fault or whether it's actual setup that you need to change. I'm always trying to figure out: okay, do I need more practice? 
Is it just me trying to understand the track in that car a bit better? Or do I really need to change the setup? Balance is very nice. Definitely improved by by the front bumper setting. Here again, that's the over rotation used to my advantage. Now here to my disadvantage. It always happens when you enter the corner too quickly. I'm just gonna go back to the pits and see. The anti robot setting definitely helped trust the car more in, in, in the slower speed um, corners. Damping is not perfect yet and I roll also not perfect. Other than that, I'm very happy. The car is not easy to drive even after some setup work. I'm gonna say that it's, it's never gonna get super stable. I have to keep in mind and that's always the case when, when doing setup work, how the track condition is and the temperatures. So I'm not gonna start to chase any grip behavior and feelings. The car right now feels very lively and feels like it doesn't have a lot of grip, but that could be due to our settings over here on, on the top right. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased. My lap times are not great. Quickest lap time so far was a 21.6. That should have been it for now. I hope you learned something about how to set up a Porsche and how to drive a Porsche. It's definitely a challenge. Other than that, give it a try. It's a lot of fun to drive and we need more people to drive this car really. Yeah, I'll put the fast lap at the end if you want to watch. Hope to see you all on track.